give us the tea, spill the tea. Like, what are like the American players saying? Like, would they come up here and play in the six? Yeah, they love it. One of my teammates was actually like, I'm thinking about moving to Toronto after the weekend. <laughs> like, it was amazing. Is it time for the WNBA to officially launch a team here in Canada? I mean, a Canadian did invent the sport, did we not? Hey, it's BG, and thanks for watching the Brandon Gonez Show. We have a special Hennessy conversation for you today, but before we get into it, I need you to do a few things. Like, subscribe to this channel, tap that notification bell, make sure to hit the like button, comment below, and share this video. So, in this special Hennessy conversation, we have WNBA star Bridget Carlton who will be joining us. She actually hails from right here in Ontario and currently plays for the Minnesota Lynx, but her journey to getting there has not been easy. She's definitely the definition of someone who never stops and more importantly, never settles. And you know what? She also wants to see the WNBA have a team right here in the six. Let's get into it. So let's meet Bridget Carlton. WNBA star Bridget Carlton, thanks so much for joining me here on The Beachy Show. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, I am super, super excited to talk to you because obviously WNBA is literally taking over. We know what happened in Toronto, but before we even get to that, I want to talk about your journey to getting into the league. Like, how did it all begin for you when it comes to basketball? Yeah, it's been quite the journey. I never thought I was going to be a WNBA player. It was never a dream of mine. I always dreamed to play on the Canadian national team and go to the Olympics. But as my career evolved, I went to a Division I college at Iowa State University, became an All-American, and I was like, okay, maybe I will get drafted. Maybe I will get a chance to play in the WNBA. And um, I continued to get better and better every single year. And um, kind of found a home in Minnesota, and this is now my fifth year playing in the league. So it's been incredible. Um, it's quite the journey and, you know, has its ups and downs for sure, but it's been a lot of fun. Well, let's talk about some of those ups and downs, because, I mean, your first year getting drafted, uh, you played in Connecticut, correct? Yes. yes. What was that like for you? I mean, that's probably, I'm guessing, like a whirlwind of an experience. Yeah. Um, so I got drafted. There was still a month left of school. So um, I missed some school, missed my graduation to go to the Connecticut training camp. Um, but obviously I was super excited to be in Connecticut to get drafted. Um, and I wanted to work as hard as I could to potentially make that team. And I did. Um, and it was hard. I mean, I wasn't getting a lot of playing time. Um, I was <laughs> riding the bench a lot, but, but practicing as hard as I could, trying to get better and better every single day. Um, and I ended up getting cut, I think like about a month into the season. Um, it was nothing that I did wrong, they said, um, but we had a point guard get hurt and they needed to bring another point guard in, which is not my position. Um, so kind of think everything kind of happens for a reason. And then I ended up getting picked up by Minnesota a couple weeks later and I've been here ever since. So yeah, definitely a low point. Getting cut was not fun. Um, it's like getting fired from a job. It's not, not the easiest thing in the world, but um, another opportunity came and I was ready for it and I've been here ever since. And that's really life, right? You look at basically when one door closes, another door opens. I find it so interesting because you grew up in Chatham, Ontario, correct? Yes. So, I mean, was 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 basketball big in Chatham? Um, in my world it was. In my family's world it was. Um, definitely like a hockey city, like a lot of Canadian cities are. Um, a lot of baseball players, a lot of hockey players. Um, I myself played hockey too, which was a lot of fun. But yeah, I love basketball um, always from a young age. My mom played basketball, so I always kind of looked up to her and she shared her love for the game with me. I had a great community around me. Um, There's a lot of people in the city of Chatham that helped me become the player I am, um, whether that was the strength conditioning or some other coaches um, around the city. Um, so I think now maybe we can consider it a basketball city because um, I see a lot, a lot of young kids um, falling in love with the game too. So that's really fun to see. I know we're all noticing it and it's like, you know, the WNBA and the fact that they played their first game in Toronto, the biggest city in Canada, and you were there on the court as well. I mean, first off, when you heard the news that it was going to be happening, what was going through your head? I was so excited. Um, I was actually a restricted free agent at the time they announced it. Um, they announced like Minnesota was going to be playing. Um, so I had to make sure I signed my contract first in Minnesota. And then once that happened and all went through, I knew I was going to be playing in the game. And I was just so excited. Um, not only for, you know, the WNBA to experience what Toronto was like, but obviously for Canadians to experience what the WNBA is like. It's like two of my worlds combining and for me to be a part of that playing in that game, um, seeing my family in the crowd, it was incredible. Um, very overwhelming and a lot happening all weekend, but it was so much fun. I know, I mean, speaking of the fans, like sold out arena at Scotiabank Arena, like 
the energy like were you feeling that <laughs> So the game was on Saturday and even on Friday when just me and my teammates were walking around the city, um, fans would stop and like just start clapping for us. It was so fun to be a part of and I'm so happy that there's so much passion for basketball in Canada right now and it's a really cool culture to be a part of. You know, you're a Canadian basketball star. The rumors out there are like Toronto needs a WNBA team. What's your take? I'm down. I'm down, obviously. I think, you know, first of all, the league's ready to expand. Um, I think we've seen it in the last few weeks that a lot of people are getting cut from rosters that deserve to be in the league. Um, only 144 roster spots, 12 teams, 12 roster spots on each team. Um, so it's a tough league to get into. And there's so many good players out there that aren't on rosters. So obviously expansion is needed um, and needed soon. And I think Toronto would be an amazing market. Obviously, we proved that. You know, the love is there. The attention is there. People want to invest in Canada and Toronto specifically. Canadian fans deserve um, professional women's sports in Canada. So, um, yeah, I'm all for it. I mean, you're in the locker room. So give us the tea. Spill the tea. Like, what are, like, the American players saying? Like, would they come up here and play in the six? Yeah, they love it. One of my teammates was actually like, I'm thinking of moving to Toronto after the weekend. <laughs> like, it was amazing. They loved it. Um, I was obviously, I said, the winters are, are pretty harsh, but nothing like Minneapolis, too. So, um, yeah, they loved it. When Toronto gets a WNBA team, I'm going to speak it into existence. Who do you think would be our main rival? Ooh, that's a good one. Maybe like a New York. They're pretty close. Um, Chicago's pretty close. Maybe like one of those closest teams um so i think you could get fans from from both cities traveling to the other city you know what i love about your story and just with conversing with you is that you're someone who literally defines what it means to never stop and more importantly never settle and i know there's a lot of young women young girls out there who have the same ambitions and the same dreams just like you so what advice would you give to them i think back to when i was growing up um what I would the advice I would give to myself is first of all never stop loving the game at the end of the day it's just a game um and there's going to be highs and lows and there's going to be ups and downs but at the end of the day you're putting a ball in the basket and um whether you're in high school college um being professional um it's like your job and also not be afraid to make mistakes um sport in general is full of mistakes and that's how you continue to get better and learn and grow but don't let you know, mistakes or a bad day or a bad week, a bad season um, get you down. Facts. I'm giving you snaps. <laughs> I'm going to give you snaps and I give you cheers of some Hennessy. Listen, I don't want to bring it there, but there are haters out there, right? That's a fact of life, especially when you're paving a path like you guys are. What would you say to the haters? Honestly, I'm, le I'm like at the point where I just let the haters hate. Um, I ignore them. I, you know, there's very few of them now um, come to a game we'll prove to you like why we're worth investing and why you shouldn't hate on us um but those few that just continue to hate that's their own problem i am so unbothered by it and i think a lot of people in the WBA are unbothered by it listen we're watching you we're cheering you on but what's next for you where do you see your career going well, um, I hope to continue, obviously, playing as long as I can. Um, hopefully go to a few more Olympics with the national team. Hopefully get on the podium with the national team. Um, I'm super excited about kind of where our national program is heading. Um, and obviously win a championship in the WNBA. That's kind of the biggest goal and continue to be the best player I can be for both the you know, Minnesota Lynx and the Canadian national team. Richard Carlton, thank you so much for joining us here at the BG Show. We are so excited for you and congratulations on everything. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. Hey, it's BG and I want to know, what do you think about what you just watched? Make sure to drop your thoughts in the comments below, but also make sure to check out even more great content like this video and this video over here. And if you haven't subscribed to The Branding Gona Show, do so right now by clicking this button right here.